grateful. <clears throat> we are grateful, Lord, for 2022. We thank you for the first Tuesday together. We appreciate the gift of life. We say thank you, Father, for gathering us once again as we conclude on this series on praise. We thank you for all that we have learned so far. We thank yes, you for the we are practicing. And I thank you, Father, especially for the difference that it's making in the lives of um, your children and in my life as well. We commit tonight into your hands. We trust that everything we say will not be vain, a vain repetition, but to add meaning to what we already know in the name of Jesus. We use this opportunity, Lord, to remember the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, us that we should remember him as often as we can, and Father, we choose to remember him every time we gather. Amen. So, beloved, I would like us to just lift up the bread in our hands as we go ahead to discern the body of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for the body of Jesus Christ. Your word tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 24, that for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Father, we lift up the bread. Love, let's lift up the bread. And we say thank you. We break the bread in our hands, Father. And we say thank you for the opportunity to remember Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he made on the cross on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's partake together. We hold the cup of the new covenant in our hands. I'm going to read for us on 1 Corinthians 11, verse 25 to 26. The Bible says that in the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we choose to remember Jesus Christ tonight. We choose to remember the blood of the new covenant. Yes. We are here today and we are who we are indeed today because of the blood of the new covenant. Jesus, we say thank you for your sacrifice, the sacrifice of your blood. Your blood was shed intentionally for this purpose. So tonight we receive um, the, the significance and the newness of our, of our identity through the blood in the name of Jesus. We say in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's partake together. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So just the very action of partaking of the body of the blood is a proclamation and uh, of the Lord's death. And we do this in anticipation of his return. Amen. You and I believe that Jesus Christ will return. So we continue to remember him until he finally returns and we see him in his glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, beloved, Amen. Um, like I said, tonight we're concluding on this series, and uh, most of what we'll be talking about will be very familiar to you. But please do not consider it a vain repetition. Amen. Repetition is God's way of doing God's way of doing things. Every day we rise up to a morning and, and to an evening. Every day. Repetition, that's repetition. It's God's standard. Amen. So with that being said, um, I'm going to do a quick recap of what we've covered so far through the various parts of the series. We began, uh, when we began part one, we talked about um, what, what, what kingdom praise was all about. And we did identify the four components of kingdom praise. We spoke about some song choices then and we've continued to do so throughout the series. And in part two, we asked the question, who praises and what praises? And we used biblical examples to answer all of those. Then um, we also talked about why, why kingdom praise? Why is this so important? Why, why spend all this time on it? And we explained that from the word. Then moving on to part three, we said, uh, we talked on whom do we praise? And when should we praise? Where should we praise? We talked about the time of praise and the time frame of praise, and we all we had scriptural references to this effect. And in part four, we identified some obstacles 
to kingdom praise results that we can possibly get through kingdom praise praise and uh, we also identified some myths and truths of kingdom praise and types of kingdom praise so tonight we're going to conclude by looking at how to praise how do we praise we've talked about that in different ways but i'm going to consolidate that information um, and then what to sing <laughs> we've already identified so many songs we've talked about how to make song choices so when i get to the place of how to identify songs of praise i'm literally going to leave the floor open so that we can now use that session as a practical to just um, express what we now understand after five series, how to um, identify songs of praise, amen. We'll make it more interactive today towards the end, amen. So with that said, we'll move on to how to praise. It was really interesting. Um, I wanna say that my eyes truly opened to Ephesians 5, 18 to 20 in this regard. Um, just this, I think last week, while I was meditating on this. So Ephesians 5, 18 to 20 says this. I'm going to read it and explain what I'm talking about. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit sing and make music from your heart to the lord always giving thanks to god the father for everything in the name of our lord jesus christ amen while i meditated on this portion of scripture i got to understand that our verbal communication with one another and about one another is um can be a form of praise amen because here in verse 19 the bible says speaking to one another with psalms hymns what do we know about psalms and hymns they are songs of praise amen as a matter of fact we'll see that the root word for hymn which is hymnos um, means um, songs of praise amen and and songs from the spirit so when we communicate with each other there are times when we ought to incorporate psalms and hymns amen it's the lord's um the kingdom way of doing things. And I thought this was really interesting while I um, studied on how we should praise. So during our regular day-to-day -day conversations, we can use those opportunities to praise the Lord um, through the words that we use with each other or about each other, amen? Because it's clearly written here that we should speak to one another, we should speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Then another aspect of this is in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Amen. So when we teach people and admonish, meaning correct them, we can incorporate praise into it. Amen. So meaning that every correction must not be, should not be condemning, actually. It should, it should, it should have a touch of praise to it. That um, I believe it helps the person move from where they are um, to the next level. That we should Amen. and admonish one another with all wisdom through sounds. It actually gives us um, a pathway what we ought to do through psalms, hymns, and songs. So I thought this was a really um, interesting way that the Bible is unveiling to us on how we can praise God, meaning that we can praise him any, at any given time when we speak, including when we correct people, amen. So I just encourage you to take a look at that at your own quiet time. Then another way of how we praise is through songs, singing songs and listening to songs, amen. But the question is, what kind of songs are they? First of all, you know, we, we have spoken about the different kinds of songs and we'll look at those again today. Now, it, the Bible tells us um, that we should sing with joy, amen? That is how we praise, we sing with joy in Psalms 33 verse 3b. And then in Psalms 63 verse five, it says, I'll praise you with songs of joy. So not only should we sing with joy, but the contents of the song should be joyful, amen? I'll praise you with songs of joy. However, I'll also sing with joy. 
Remember, we talked about the sacrifice of joy, where you give up your right to be upset about a situation or to be frustrated about a situation and offer up joy to the Lord as a way of expressing your trust in him. Amen. And hoping that and believing that he'll take care of what uh, rightfully should hurt you or hurts you. Amen. So we sing joyfully, we sing songs of joy, we also sing songs of thanksgiving, as we see in Psalms 28 verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield, I trust him with all my heart, he helps me and my heart is filled with joy, I burst out in songs of thanksgiving, songs of thanksgiving, so we can choose to specifically sing songs of thanksgiving, we can choose to sing um songs of joy and sing them joyfully and then in psalms 32 verse 7 it says you're my hiding place you protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance another translation says songs of victory amen so we can choose to sing songs of deliverance as we identify how the lord has delivered us and released us from um, different situations we can choose to sing um, that kind of song to him as a way of appreciating and acknowledging that which he has done in our lives. Now, when we listen to the song, the song says, clap your hands in the sanctuary. And I, write, I, I told us that if we listen to the song and not do what it's saying, then we haven't praised the Lord, amen? It's one thing to listen, it's another thing to do what it's saying as a way of praising him. And clapping hands is biblical, amen, is scriptural, so we ought to do it. Sometimes you hear me say, let's clap our hands for the Lord. It's not just a nice thing um, that we are doing. It's something that the Lord requires of us every now and then. In Psalms 47 verse 1, the Bible says, come everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with joyful praise. Shout to God with joyful praise clap your hands clap your hands amen so now we have a scripture to that um, particular action and then also lifting up our hands which pastor emphasized last week and she she rightfully said uh, when we resist lift, lifting up our hands we are actually living in bondage but we we may not know so we need to get into a quiet uh, place with the lord and ask him to release us from that um Dissipation, if I may say, amen. We see this in Psalms 141 verse two and Psalm 134 verse two, and I'll read this. It says, may my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Beloved, every time we see the word sacrifice, um, one of the first things that should pop up in our mind should be the aspect of doing something that you prefer to not do, but you're doing it for the Lord. It's your sacrifice to him. Amen. Under normal circumstances, you prefer not to do it. And there are many things that we prefer not to do, but the Lord requires that we do them. Amen. So it means that it must not always be convenient for us. Amen. For as long Amen. as it's convenient for him, we live for him and what he says we should do. That's exactly what we should be doing. Then he says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. That's what that song was talking about. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Amen. And when we lift up our hands in the sanctuary, it is our way of um, praising the Lord. Amen. Okay. So I believe that is really clear. We're still talking about how to praise the Lord, right? Um, we use shouts of joy, shouts of joy. Sometimes you may um, get into a worship sanctuary and uh, or when you hear people praising the Lord, you hear them shouting, all kinds of shouts. Those are not just, um, for the most part, not vain shouts, amen. They are doing it as their offering of praise to the Lord because it is scriptural. And at a given time, that is what the Holy Spirit may be requiring of us. Because remember, when it comes to any kind of prayer, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Amen. He is our helper. We cannot uh, but depend on him when it comes to prayer. Otherwise, we will not be able to pray. Never try to pray by your own effort and strength. Amen. 
In Psalms um, 47 verse 1, the Bible says, come everyone, clap your hands, shout to God with joyful praise. Amen. Shout to God with joyful praise. It's very specific, shouting to him with joyful praise. Amen. So we need to make our voices heard in the land of the living. We need to burst out of our reservations when it comes to kingdom practices. Amen. It's like he has told us, it's okay. It's just okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the other aspect here that I identified is by our lifestyles of excellence. By this, I mean reflecting his glory always. Every opportunity that we have, we give our best, very best to it. Every opportunity that we um, have to, with um, people or encounter people, we give the best that we can offer. Amen. We should never um, reserve our best when it comes to dealing with people. Deal with people like the Lord will deal with them. Amen. Reflecting his glory in our work ethics. Reflecting his glory in the way we interact with people. In the way we treat our family, our family members, how we care for our children, and the list goes on and on. Basically, our lifestyles, everything about us, how we choose to represent ourselves physically, spiritually, and emotionally are all ways of, um, are all opportunities um, to praise him and to reflect his glory. Never, <laughs> there is a saying in the world that there's never a dull moment. When it comes to living the kingdom lifestyle, amen, there's never a dull moment. Every second of our life is an opportunity to maximize potential. Every opportunity, even in your sleep, amen. Every opportunity in your eating, your cooking, your driving, your, your conversations is an opportunity to reflect the glory of the Lord. And as we do so, we, we are praising in him, amen. That is how we praise him. And of course, using instruments, <clears throat> We read this last week, and that's, this is what led to everyone talking about what they would, they would like to, and the instrument they would like to use, learn how to use this year. Amen. So Psalms 150, verse 3 to 5 says, praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. So you can, you and I can choose to buy the shofar, that's what it is, and just blow it out to the Lord as a way of praising him. And it says, praise him with a lyre and harp. Praise him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. You realize that there is no voice here, just instruments and of course dancing, which is another way that we praise him. But here we're focused on the instruments. So whichever instrument you and I choose to um, learn how to use may it be for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And sometimes when you go to YouTube, you realize that there are instrumentalists. People just play instruments, you know, and as a way of worshiping God and as a way of praising God. It just sets the atmosphere, especially during prayers. Amen. So we hear that a lot. That is what they have chosen to do, but you can choose to do different as you're led. Amen. Amen. And also, um, last but not least on this list is by acknowledging and verbalizing every benefit. You and I can choose to praise God by simply just sitting down and writing out or speaking out all the benefits that we do remember, amen. As a matter of fact, we shouldn't be forgetting the, the benefits that we receive from the Lord because it, is in, it will come in handy during our times of praise, amen. It will come in handy so that we're not quiet when we're asked, being asked to lift up our praises to him. Let's build up our um, praise and worship muscles. Let's build them up. Like anyone who goes to the gym, let's consider, especially like our morning prayer sessions as our spiritual gym, where we build up ourselves, amen, in prayer. The Bible says, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We see that. 
forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed with the eagles. Amen. You see how the psalmist talks about forgetting not all his benefits and now he starts listing out the benefits which is the same thing that you and I should be doing during times of praise, amen. So you realize that the options are many, so many that we can truly not afford to be quiet during praise. Is it clapping your hands? Is it dancing, jumping, playing the instruments, you know, just speaking up uh, out aloud to the Lord, shouts of joy, singing and all of those. There's so many options that we truly, truly cannot afford to be quiet when it's time to praise the Lord. And we truly should not even run out of options. Amen. We shouldn't. Amen. So those are the few things I came up with when it comes to um, how to praise the Lord through our verbal communication, through songs. Um, amen. When we sing songs and listen to songs through clapping our hands, lifting up our hands, through shouts of joy, and by our lifestyle of excellence, using instruments, and also acknowledging every benefit. Amen. So that's what we have for that. And then we move on to the next point, major point for the night, what to sing. What should we truly sing when it comes to songs? We know that songs, uh, one way, uh, one amongst many ways that we praise the Lord, but what should be the content of the song? I'm very emphatic about content of song because it's necessary, amen. It's very necessary. It makes all the difference during, during the praise sessions because what you hear during prayer will affect what you'll be saying to the Lord. So you really want to make sure that you're, so, you, you're up to par when it comes to, your song, um, to the song choices. Better still, if you don't want to be influenced by any words, extra words during your praise sessions, you may just want to use the instrumentals to keep to set the atmosphere so that your own words become the only words that are being spoken in that environment. Amen. But if we must choose songs as praise aids, amen, we need to be very, very particular about them. Very particular. So what do we sing? We sing new songs. The Bible talks about new songs in Psalms 33, verse 3a. It says, sing a new song of praise to him. A new song of praise to him. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. So point number one, we ought to sing new songs of praise to him. How does that look like in this day and age when the Lord does something to you and I? which most probably I'll say maybe he has never done before. That's an opportunity to lift up a song to him for this new experience that you, you've just had. It could be maybe you just got married, never been married before. That's a new opportunity to sing a new song. Maybe you just had your first child or your second child. You've never had a second child before. That's an opportunity. You get admitted into an institution, school or a job as new to you, that's an opportunity to sing a new song. You wake up in the morning, tomorrow is going to be January 5th, 2002. You've never experienced January 5th, 2002 before. You sing a new song of praise to him, amen. So we have so many opportunities to sing new songs of praise to him. Lift up your own songs in your own words to him. It must not be a song that someone else has sung before. It could be something that the spirit that, that comes wells out of your spirit, man, and comes out through your lips to the ears of the Father. Amen. Psalms 40 verse 3 says, he has given me a new song to sing. I remember Sister Wendy was speaking together with um, Pastor Shirley about how um, Sister Wendy will sometimes just receive songs from the throne. Amen. Because the Lord gives her those songs. I believe it's the same for some of us on the line. The Lord can give you a new song. Never heard it anywhere. You just, maybe you're even at the grocery store and this song just pops out and you start singing it over and over because the Lord gave it to you. It's possible because the word of God says so. He has given me a new song 
to sing. So the purpose of those new songs is such that we sing, amen? Not to keep it to ourselves. We need to sing it out to him, sing it, edify the brethren as well. Then now it goes ahead to tell us the kind of songs, a hymn of praise to our God, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Amen. Psalms 96 verse 1 a says, sing a new song, new song to the Lord. It's actually a command that we sing a new song. And rightfully so, because every day is a new opportunity to sing to the Lord. Amen. He has never heard you sing on January 5th, 2022. So when we wake up, we can sing a song to him on that day. And it will be new to him because it's a new day to us. Amen. Psalms 98 verse 1 says, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. So we can sing new songs when when things happen to us, wonderful deeds happen to us. Amen. We can do that to the Lord. And beloved, it's not a, a suggestion. Amen. I like identifying instructions from the word of God. Lest I think, you know, I can just do things at my own convenience. It says sing a new song. It's not suggesting to us. It's giving us an instruction which we need to obey. Amen. So we need to be keen to identifying instructions from the word and then quick to implement them. It makes all the difference in how fast we grow and how far we go and how deep we get rooted in spiritual things, amen. If we're very casual with the instructions of God, then it stalls our growth and then eventually we begin to regress. So let's be quick to pick up the instructions and run with them. The faster we implement, the more instructions he gives us, the higher we get, amen, and the better amen. we get spiritually, amen. And the more we can help people, we should not always be at a position where we are being helped. We can help people if we choose to grow faster. And one of the ways of growing faster is by implementing instructions as soon as we receive them from the Lord, amen. Okay, so we're looking at what to sing. We sing hymns. Um, we had identified that hymns, the root word for hymns, um, hymnos means songs of praise, amen. So we can sing songs of praise to him, um, meaningful and applicable songs, amen. In Psalms 40 verse 3 it says, he has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. You so you, we realize here that when God, even when the Lord himself gives you and I a song, he's specific about what he's given us to sing. He gives us a hymn of praise so that we can lift it up to him, a hymn of praise. So it's not something random that he does. It's very specific. And because he is, we learn from him and become specific in our song choices as well. He says, many will see what he has done and be amazed. They'll put their trust in the Lord. Amen. Okay, so, so this is where... Um, I'm going to actually leave the floor open if I get back to it. We've spoken a lot about how to identify um, songs of praise, amen. So based on what we have learned so far, I just really want to leave the floor open and have us talk about what you have learned in this journey when it comes to choosing songs of praise most specifically. Please, the floor is open. Just share your thoughts. Let's all learn from each other. Amen. Amen. If you were to choose a song of praise, what would you be looking at? And if someone were to ask you, okay, you've learned about kingdom praise, you've heard um, so many things being said about song choices. So if you had to choose a song of praise, most specifically, what would be your guiding tips for yourself and for someone else? The goal of us learning so that we can help others. Amen. Amen. Um, for me, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> for me, um, my songs that I prefer is uh, songs that lift uh, Jesus higher and songs with scriptures, such as uh, Word in the House. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, um, that's one of my favorite album because the entire album is scripture. And with that, you learn scripture as you're going 
uh, as you're learning the song, but it's all Bible. So I like that a lot. Um, and that's, for me, worship is a big deal. Um, and when, when, when I'm doing worship or when, what I like for worship is just to give God praise, just whether I'm just, it's a song that says, thank you, Lord, or one just letting him know how awesome he is. That's what I like for me. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Pastor. Amen. Amen. So would anyone like to go next? Can I make a comment on the, the clapping of the hands? Yes, please, yes. Psalms 47 says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And when we are shouting, and when we are, when we open up our mouth, we are not only lifting Jesus higher or giving him praise and adoration, but we're we're freeing ourselves at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if we look at it, when we can't do that, the enemy is literally stealing from us because we can go to a football game or any kind of game, watch a movie, and we shout and just get loud, sometimes louder than the rest of the people in the, <laughs> in the place, with no problem. When the songs that we like, worldly songs, they were like, hey, ho, and doing all of that. No problem. But when it comes to the things of God, it's a problem. That is an absolute indication that, it that there is a demonically influenced present whenever we can't do that. So that's something that we want to look at. And clapping our, our hands is a weapon. The enemy doesn't want that. It's like hearing the drums. When Saul was being uh, plagued or influenced or uh, being tormented by demonic spirit, he would ask David to play. And whenever David played, the demons left. When you clap your hands and when we clap our hands, they are going to leave because we are giving God praise. We are shouting and letting them know, they let the enemy know that, you know, this territory, you cannot reside. You can't even come close. When we stamp our feet, it's the same way. When we begin to dance like David or just dance in general to the things of God and just give him in praise, then whatever is in your environment is going to leave that does not line up with God and does not line up with what you're doing right now. So clapping our hands is something that we ought to do and just dancing before the Lord. You can do it in private. You know, you can do it in private because as we, as uh, Dr. Mildred says, when we start exercising ourselves, then what you do as far as dancing, shouting, clapping your hands in private, it's going to then take you outside openly. And before you know it, that's what you're doing. But when you can't do that, that's the enemy trying to steal your joy, steal, you know, uh, steal your desire or ability to stomp him to the ground, basically. You Amen. know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for saying that, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on the identifying songs of praise or what do you do? Maybe share your experiences, what you do preferably and what makes your praise sessions productive. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I like to choose songs that um, help to strengthen me or speak to me a situation I might be dealing with. So like, um, maybe like a song, Fill Me Up, or I'm No Longer a Slave to Fear, just songs that speak to me to help to build me up as well as, you know, give praise to God for everything that he's doing. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for sharing that. Amen. Any other thoughts?
I believe we all praise the Lord, amen. So please do us a favor to communicate, amen, so that we are encouraged that everything we've been doing for the past five weeks have really made a difference, which we want to believe so, amen. Okay, Um. in the last few weeks, one thing I have learned new about picking praise songs and relevant that's relevant to my situation is to actually Google maybe an emotion or something I'm feeling or something I'm going through and type praise in the Google search along with whatever I'm going through. And um, try what comes up or in Google, not just songs. If I'm looking for, like if I'm just, whatever I'm going through, I'll type in um, a certain person's name, like example, Sarah Jakes. And I'll type the word to describe what I, the type of message I want to listen to. Mm-hmm. And it'll pull up something that's even, that's more relevant and more effective at the moment. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts? Okay. So um, let me just read out a few tips here on how to identify songs of praise most specifically because remember we did a worship session and we talked about worship songs we did a praise and now we are concluding on a praise session amen so we're concluding on this so i'm talking about praise songs most specifically we ought to be doing both praise and worship but for the purpose of today's teaching we're talking about praise amen so you know um over the years what i've identified is that quite often people associate fast paced songs as um to songs of praise it's not always the case. A fast paced song may not even be a, a praise song. It could strictly be a worship song or a song meant to just uplift a person. Amen. So it may right. not actually even be a praise song. So that's why the lyrics, the words, Pastor was talking about um, um, songs that have scriptural verses or references. The words, the lyrics of songs matter more than the pace of the song. Once you have identified what the lyrics are and see that it's applicable to your situation at that given time, depending on what you are expecting or required to do, once you've compared those, then you can make the the, the, the pace of the song relevant. Amen. You can choose to change the pace after you understand the lyrics. If you understand the lyrics and it's too slow, sing it in your own way and make it faster. If it's too fast, sing it in your own way and make it slower. Amen. The, The words will either heal or kill. So it's very important that we are very choosy when it comes to the words um, of the song. And then another guiding tip when it comes to praise specific songs is that not every song that declares the word praise in it is actually a praise song, amen. We, We saw a few songs in this light. And the title of the song will actually say, Praise the Lord. And then when you look at the song, there's nothing about praising God in it, amen. Nothing about it. So as a matter of fact, we need to be reading the lyrics of songs like we're reading uh, um, our Bibles to to examine it, to see, okay, is this what I want to get into my spirit today? Do not think um, for once that this is just too much for a child of God. This is what makes us, this is what lifts us, and this is what propels us. We are spirit beings, so it's important that what we get into our spirit are the right nutrients to lift us up and propel us to the next level. Otherwise, life becomes very challenging, but that is not how God intended for it to be. Amen. Amen. And of course, when we are looking at praise songs, this is just um, a few guiding tips from my end. We want to make sure that the songs are directed to a person. Songs of praise, like songs of worship, should not be random. They should be directed to God because he is the object of our praise. He is the object of our worship. If we want to praise a person, then we should be doing that and doing it well. If we want to praise God, then we should equally be doing that and doing it well. And let's make it personal. If, let's say, Sister Perdita gives me a gift and I want to appreciate her. 
I will not just come and say, oh, I appreciate you, I appreciate you. And she may not even know that I'm talking to her. But if I say, Sister Perita, I do appreciate you for giving me this pencil as a gift, then it's most specific to her. And the reason for me appreciating her has been stated. Sister Perita, I thank you for gifting me with this pencil. Then we come, when we come to God too, we say, dear Lord, or however you are addressing, daddy, father, I thank you for X, Y, and Z that you have done in my life. You address him and then you say exactly what you're grateful for to him. That way you, you narrow down um, the vagueness of, <laughs> of praise. You narrow it down to a specific entity, a specific object of worship and praise, and you make it known to him. The Bible says, praise the Lord, oh my son, forget not all his benefits. Now, not forgetting the benefits will require that we name them, we list them one after the other, just like the psalmist did. He took time to list them, and he was listing them out to the Lord, not just to space, not just randomly, he was specific. Amen. And of Amen. course, um, <clears throat> we also saw this, um, that praise songs, most praise songs do not exclusively have praise words. We had looked at the Balm of Gilead, that song, and we saw how it transitioned from um, worship to praise. So in one song, you can have two things going on there. So you want to be keen to that. But when you look at some of, I'll say, Don Moyne's songs, they have exclusive, he has exclusive praise songs, songs of thanksgiving exclusively, amen. So those are some things that um, I want to encourage us to just look out for so that we give care to our growth, we give attention to our growth. We do give attention to physical education. We do give attention to our jobs. We give attention to the practice or the, the seasons of um, probation. We give attention to the learning seasons where we shadow people to learn. We give attention to those things. Why? Because there is a monetary value attached to it. There is a reward. Beloved, the reward that we get from giving attention to the word supersedes Amen. all of them. Amen. They do, it is a, it's actually because of your attention to this that those other things come to you. Amen. So let's not despise the simplicity of the word. Let's give it the attention that is due and leave the results to God. And he has promised us that he's our exceedingly great reward. Reward. Amen. He not Amen. only rewards us with things, but he rewards us with himself. When God rewards you with himself, what beats that? He said nothing beats that. So please, this is what a word of encouragement to us for the glory of the Lord. Let's give care and attention to our walk with the Lord. Amen. And he'll make everything else easier for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I got a I got another comment, um, Dr. Mildred. Um when we when we listen to songs, as you stated about paying attention to the lyrics, you know, the songs can really not only are we glorifying God and it's blessing us, but it could take you in a place of belief, changing your mind about what it is that you believe or what you understand. For example, um, that song uh, that says no weapon form against me. Um, I forgot the guy's name right now that sings Fred it. Hammond. Come again? Fred Hammond. Fred I'm Hammond, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fred Hammond made a song back in, nine, in the 90s. And that song, whenever you play that CD, you can literally feel the anointing coming from that, that, that album. And Amen. when you listen to it and it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When the enemy rise up and try to come at you, you know how God is going to raise up a standard against him, which is the word. So, so if you heard the word and now you're hearing the song, and if you never heard the word, but you hear the song, and because we love music naturally, then when you hear the lyrics, and you know that you're praising God and you're allowing the lyrics to get on the inside of you. There is no way you would, you would not believe what the word is saying. 
And he's saying no weapon that is formed against you is able to prosper. And 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 some other words that's in that the song goes on about. But just that one song could change your whole continent. It could change your whole demeanor. It could change everything about you because now at that hour, that song hit you so hard in your heart, in your mind that you you literally begin to believe that. That's how important songs are. It's no different from when we listen to a worldly song and when the song talk about a female like a dog, right? After a while, if you weren't a person that think that way, you're going to start, when somebody start acting up, you call them all kind of names because that's what we sow into our soul. Now, when we begin to sow the songs of, of joy and the songs of the to the Lord, then that's what we are putting in our soul. So now when we open up our mouth, even at times you just be doing something and that song comes up. That very hour, when whatever song comes into your spirit or whatever song comes to your mind, that song is what is going to please God at that hour. And when you begin to sing it, and the more you sing it, the more you believe it, the more you like it, and then that thing takes you to a whole nother realm. Songs are so important. It, it, I mean, the, the, the teaching is... You know, oh, you know, learning how to to sing. I mean, learning how to praise and how to worship and how to clap and all of that, what it means. But I'm telling you, you don't find ministries teaching this stuff at all. They just, you know, go, you, you can do some worship song and that's it. But there's always a meaning behind it. And we have to remember John 10, 10, because Jesus said that he come that we might have life and life more abundantly. But he also tell us that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. What does he want to steal? He want to steal your joy. He want to steal everything that would make you you and, and productive in the things of God. Yeah. Songs are so important. Whether it's songs of deliverance, you know, the song that says, um, my God is a deliverer. My God is a healer. You know, when you sing those songs over and over and over, and that thing get on down to your bones, into your marrow. My God. That's when you see change come. Amen. That's when you will see, you'll get a deeper understanding of, you're like, wow. And and it's not even so much, you, you, you know, that you're, you're just praising, but when you begin to praise, you get yourself, your flesh begin to sing songs and clap. But at, as, as you get deeper into that praise, then worship take over. And when worship take over, you are lost. You're gone. So now it was seven o'clock. And when you turn around, it's 10 p.m. Because you got into the presence of God just by worship, just by giving praise. And it's not about you. Yes, emotions are there and you will go with songs that takes us, you know, deal with our situation. Absolutely nothing is wrong with that. But I guarantee you, as long as you continue in that trend, God is going to take you into a place of worship. Amen. Now you're going to see him and you're going to start saying, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you did so and so. Thank you that even today when there was almost an accident, you protected me. Thank you, God, that you, you allow me not only to see 2022, but my God, I am, I'm well. I'm not sick. Oh, you're muted. Glory to God. So <laughs> much. And so we just allow that 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 music, allow the worship, allow the lyrics, allow the song, and allow the Holy Spirit to take you into a whole nother realm. It's sweet. I'm telling you, it's sweet. And to go to your bed with songs playing. Sometimes I even put the word on and I find myself in wherever they at. You understand? So when you allow that to get in your spirit, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing. It's just not singing a song, but it's absolutely transforming you yourself from one place to another as the Holy Spirit will take you there.
Amen. 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 I like everything you said, and even most especially how you ended. When you say when you um before going to bed, you play like the scriptures or a song. Amen. It's such a tradition that I believe every person should have. You can use your devices for that purpose. Just put that song on repeat. I like when I'm going to bed, I like songs. I like playing songs that remind me that God is my everything. Amen. Those are Amen. the kind of I like going to bed, listening and waking up to. The songs that tell me that I have to, I need to put God first. That reminds me that I'm secondary to everything and to every um, situation. But God is first. So you can always make a choice Amen. for yourself and build up your spirit. It's amazing how <laughs> we may think it's not really important because, okay, you're sleeping, so you're not listening anyway. But our spirits listen. They absorb things at night. And then you wake up wise and sometimes you wonder why, you know. But Absolutely. Those things contribute to make us better. The Bible says that he will teach us and great will be our peace. And then one of the best times for the Lord to teach us is when we are sleeping because we will not argue with him. <laughs> so we wake up implementing. Amen. So that's true. <laughs> that's true. Praise God. All right. So um, just to add on, um, it's, it's super, super important. Like what we, we listen to just um, adding on to kind of what Pastor Jones was saying. Um like there's it's, it's simple there's two sides we're either listening to stuff that's glorifying and praising god or we're not and if we're not it's not with god we're not it's not on the side of god um there's no in between with it there's many songs that say praise that use these words and they're glorifying and praising worldly things um and it does go into your system. Music carries waves and vibrations that goes directly, speak directly into us. It can change um, atmospheres. It can change your mood. We cannot forget um, in 1 Samuel where King Saul uses David to play the harp and um, changes the entire atmosphere so much so that it says that an evil spirit left from King Saul. He was not feeling it. He wasn't in a great mood. He wasn't in a great um, place. And music made a spirit depart. So in that same way, music can bring in spirits that um, are not good spirits. So um, just being very mindful and not leaving that, that uh, door open to where we invite negative spirits into ourselves from what we listen to. So that's what I took from that. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Amen. So any other thoughts? I want to add to that. I can't remember the exact words, but I remember a while ago I was listening to the radio and it's a um, song called Cherish the Day by Sade. And I was just listening and I, she said something about if something, something, then something she don't want to go to heaven. And I paused like, whoa, no, <laughs> and just had to turn the radio off like, uh-uh. Um, according to what um Prophet Desiree just said, it's songs that the spirit that it brings. Yeah. Either it can manifest a good spirit or it can enter into you uh, a wicked spirit. Mm -hmm. And I caught that and that's what it just made me think about. Amen. Amen. So any other thoughts tonight? Okay, so if not, so I just want to remind us again that um, morning prayers began on Monday. Um, if you're able to challenge yourself to be able to, by all means, join us so that we pray together and command our morning. As we command our morning, so goes the day. Amen. So join us um, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so that we can pray together. Amen. Fellowship, we're trying to cultivate fellowship with the Lord. We not only come to him when we have things to ask him for, we want to build relationship, fellowship with him and with the Holy Spirit. It's a year of the Spirit of God, and there's no better way to um, 
see the manifestations of the Holy Spirit apart from fellowship. Amen. So I, I, everyone is invited. Invite somebody who has been desiring to wake up early and pray, but have not been able to. This is a great opportunity to groom that aspect of our lives. I consider it a spiritual gym. Let's come and exercise our spiritual muscles so that we grow strong in prayer, just like we are growing strong in the word. Amen. Amen. Um, then tomorrow I'll be talking about the details of the Daniel fast. So those who would like to be partakers of the Daniel fast, please do, it, do your best to attend tomorrow's service. Our Bible studies from 7 to 8, that's what the emphasis will be on. And please, if you need the, the fasting guide and you haven't already requested, please do so and I'll forward it to you so that you go through it. And then tomorrow, I'm going to help go through some of the details. The assumption that you have already gone through it at least once. Amen. I encourage everyone to be part of some kind of fast at the beginning of this year. Make that sacrifice now so that the year stands on a solid foundation. Amen. Okay, so that brings us to the end of tonight. As we conclude, I would like for us to pray for a few of our sisters. Um, for the sake of privacy, I wouldn't call up their names here. Um, they have COVID. Amen. So I just want us to lift up our voices tonight and just pray for them and for the body of Christ. Many people have been stricken with this dilemma lately. Amen. And let's also pray for protection. The year just began. Yesterday was our first snow day in Maryland and three people died not very far from us. First snow day and the year just began. Why will you die on the, on the 3rd of January? The year just started. So let's pray for the protection of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so please let's lift up our voices and just commit this to aspects. If you have a prayer point, you can feel free to let us know so that we add it to everything and pray together. Okay, if not, so let's just pray for our sisters who are who have COVID in this season and uh, the body of Christ generally, and let's also pray for the protection of the Lord from accidents and diseases and all of these things, the plants of the enemy. So let's pray. Please let's unmute and pray together. Amen. So our Father and our God, we're so grateful. Yeah. just want to say thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for all that we have received. We are grateful, Father, for love on us. It's a privilege to be part of 2022. And our desire is to continue this year on a good foot. So Father, we use this opportunity to pray as and may you raise a head of protection all around us in the name of Jesus. Give us, Lord, from the arrows of the wicked one in the name of Jesus. Say thank you, oh Father, because no weapon fashion against you in the aspect of protection, in the aspect of the health, in the name of your protection, the sister, and the body of Christ at large. For those who have been stricken with this disease, Lord, lately, that I may Jehovah Rapha come for them. Father, we thank you because you want to say healing is a children's prayer, and by your stripes, I have and everyone connected to us. May you bring comfort to this family of the bereaved, even though.
So I'll hand over to Sister Desiree from here. Amen. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, we bless you, God, for this evening. We bless you for the word, Father God, that has been brought forth to us, oh God. We bless you, oh God, that has been pierced into our spirits, oh God, and into our hearts, oh God, tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence amongst us, O oh God. I bless you for my family and my friends tonight, O oh God, all my brothers and sisters on the line. O oh God, we just rest in your hands tonight, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that the praise is all yours, O oh God. We thank you, God, that there is no one like you, O oh God. No one deserves and receives the praise, O oh God, like you, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory today, O oh God, all the honor, Father God. And we bless you for allowing us even to walk into this new year with you, O oh God. We give this year, we give our lives completely and solely to you, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us in this year or any year to come will prosper in our lives, O oh God. We bless you, Father God, from keeping us from accidents, from injury, Father God, even death. Oh, Lord, that we have another day to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being our Lord and for being our Savior. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done for us thus far. And we thank you for everything that you are doing, Father God. We glorify you for who you are, oh God. And we just continue to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh God. We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. All the power belongs to you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. Right in the light of God, now and forever. Now and forever. And surely, God's goodness and joy all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, family. Yeah. I have a blessed night. I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> 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 <laughs>